Well, folks, I'm going to take you on a little trip today. I'm going to take you to Uxbridge Fire Museum with my friend Roy. We're going to sit down and talk for a little bit. I'm going to let you see what the town has done for him. They've actually restored the old firehouse here in town, and uh, they're going to take us for a sneak peek. It doesn't open till I believe, June 1st or somewhere around there. But we're going to take a sneak peek, and we're going to let you see you know, a little bit of history of the Uxbridge Fire Museum, and uh, I think we're going to do a little series on this. So I hope you enjoy, and don't forget to come out here to Uxbridge, Massachusetts, and check out the Fire Museum for yourself. Okay? Peace. Kitchen.
Zanzuza, built by the Archbishop Worsted, uh, the original old mill that's current in Depot Street in uh, July of 77, I mean, uh, yeah, 2007. And uh, the garage was built probably between 1912, 1915, and uh, all the base to the garage uh, at the time were being used by the high exception, uh, the old Uxbridge Worsted. It was known as the Batman Uxbridge Worsted. And uh, so uh, all the high execs would keep their classic cars to keep it out of the weather, you know. Yeah. And then, because uh, up, in, up until 1920, the town was still, the uh, fire equipment was still being uh, hushed run. Oh, yeah. And uh, when my father went on in 21, uh, that was the year the town appropriated money. They wanted to, they wanted to have a fully equipped motorized vehicle. So uh, one of the fellas took my father down to uh, Middleborough to match him. And uh, he drove back a 1921 combination fire street pumper. And, you're good, uh, you're good, man. So uh, then they got rid of the horse drawn equipment. Well, at that time, there was no center station. The town had five separate stations in town with horse drawn equipment. Right. The, the very uh, farthest one to the east was where the Polish American Club is on 16. That's where one station was located. And then the next one was on County Street. No, it was in, uh, no, the, the next one was in back of St. Mary's Church. Okay. Uh, the, the house right after the priest house, uh, there was a big barn in the back, which is now St. Mary's Rectory and okay. uh, Community uh, Center there. No, there was a big barn, and the family that uh, owned that property was a, a family called Divit, D-E-V-I-T-T. -T. So they kept the horse-drawn equipment in that, and then the next one was on County Street, right off the 16th, yeah. right off the Koopman Lung. Yeah. Just up the road there on the right, there's a big, big structure. It was a big barn uh, that was owned by Taft, Arthur Taft and they kept the uh, horse-drawn equipment in, in that barn. And then uh, the next one was this station. And then the last one to cover the wet, wet north and west part of the town was over here on Linwood Street in back of the Linwood Post Office, which it still operates today. There's a big structure in the back of the post office. That was a big barn. And a family that owned that property with uh, Britain. B R I T T O N. So they so they had the town covered from east to what to north and, and west with all these separate stations right, with yeah, us yeah, drawn yeah. equipment. Yeah, spaced out so then, enough so they could So cover. then when my father brought the twenty one maximum back from Middleborough, the you know, center station, the back when Oxbridge Worsted Mill went to the town selectman and said, take the first bay to that garage. For that truck. So that garage we have been in till now, and we you know, moved into our new one. That was the fire station for seven years. Right. That was the first you said the very first, first yeah. uh, motor the station for the motor, first motor. And that was so, cool that they let you be there too with your museum to start. Well, it all, yeah. Well, what happened was uh, after the Burnett family. Uh, they bought it off from the Batman Oxbridge Worsted coming into the late 1950s, early 60s. So the Burnett family ran it up until coming into the uh, early to mid 70s. And then a gentleman uh, bought the property, where his name was Thomas Schwartz. And uh, Thomas began to re remodel and have some small businesses in there at the time. And. Uh, then in 2002, I'm in the town hall and picked up on whatever was posted on a bulletin board. He had submitted paperwork for the demolition of the garage. Mm -hmm. So I turned around and I did this story. And uh, I called it uh, History Lost But Not Forgotten. 
they distributed a garage, being the first fire station for the first motor ride, being my father and his brother Ernie on. Right. And um, so uh, in 1928, the town decided to build the old center station, which they tore down uh, three, four years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, in the meantime, uh, in 2004, Tom sold the mill out. So the new owners uh, was Jack Tweed and uh, Leonard Fournier. They were in co-partners uh, in the fire the mill, which the garage was uh, all that property went with the mill property. So Tom goes and moves down to Texas. So the demolition of the garage did So in the meantime, I did the story of the garage and the history. So then in September of 2005, the new owners, Jack Tweed in California, called me up. It was September the 17th, 2005. So I go down to the little office on Menden Street, right by the, uh, the bridge in the river is. I got pictures of that office when the early woman though, that was a mill office. Oh, was it? Going way back. Wow, wow. So uh, I went in and uh, they asked me what my thought was about the garage. So I, uh, I said, yeah, if we can work something out, I'd like to turn the first bay into a fire museum, being it was a fire station for seven years for the first motorized. They, talked, they, they, they went along and agreed with it. Well, that was so, uh, common, you know. but the, some crazy things happened. Um, Jack Tweed, and not knowing uh, the name Tweed, Lyndon Fournier told me that uh, when he was a kid, he was with the Ashland by the time uh, oh. in his early years for a while. Jack Tweed is a different story. I had bought a book out of a uh, long time ago at a, a bookstore. I think it was Walden Books. And uh, they used to have a, uh, my folks used to shop down at uh, Lincoln, Rhode Island at uh, Lincoln Mall. Yeah, and Walden Books was in, in the, uh, the store there, in the mall. And um, so I bought this thing on the 100 year of fire service in the United States, starting in 1700. Oh. So, um, one day it's sitting in a, sitting down there, uh, right after Jack and then I bought the mill. I was sitting there reading it, the book, that book one day, going through the history, you know. I got to the, the years of coming into the 1800s. So I'm reading along and got into 1830. Back then, the book states that most all the big cities back then, all their volunteer departments had nicknames. And uh, New York, New York had a, had a lot of them. Uh, some, just to give you an example, they had the, 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 the black jokes, the food bridge, the honeybees, the knickerbockers. So I'm reading in that, that section in the 1830s. And on the page I'm on, it says about this young boy, 12 years old. And his name is William Massey Tweed. So he joins the Knickerbockers. Several so years later, he gets become the certified volunteer with the Knickerbockers. I got to, I got to think of William Massey Tweed. I got to own of this milk property, Jack Tweed. So something was just striking me in my mind, you know. So uh, I took the book up to the library to the photo, had him photocopy that page. So uh, Jack was Jack Nellick was in the office every day. He, he he'd come and go at times. Leonard mostly stayed running the office during the daytime with the secretary. So this one day Jack I see his car in a in a lot back at uh, the office. So I uh, took the page down and uh, I said Jack I uh, read a story about this young fellow in New York that joins a 
New York Nick apartment volunteer fire department, 12 years old. Then he had this little smirk. He said, yeah, that's my triple great grandfather. Uh -huh. I said, really? Well, we must have tweeted later years, coming into his 20s and that. He became a staunch high. He was he was a tough politician. Got into the politics. Mm -hmm. Became known as boss tweet of Tammany Hall. Oh wow! Wow! So that's some history, you know? Yep. Pretty so cool. I can see why they went along with, with my with my yes. idea of turning that. Yeah. So it took off from there. So Jack, that October, uh, following. Uh, Coming into October 2005, uh, Jack asked me if there was any old stuff around. I said, yeah. Two hose reels in the chemical tank sat out in that South Oxford new station outside for 20-some years. Right in the yeah. Well, Jack said, it was on a Saturday morning. Jack said, well, let's go down and get them. We got a <laughs> couple pickup trucks. Tell his dad, and we went down and hauled them back. So Jack said, Take him into the boiler room, gave us the key to the door, he said to Benny Emmerich and I. Benny and I sat through the winter months, November, December, sitting on a bench in, in there, trying to break down how we're going to set everything up with our museum and right. who, who we want and everything, you know, working out, working it out. Jack gave us the key, he said, you want, you need paints, you need, uh, at the maintenance shop was in there. Anything you want, help yourself. Get that stuff restored. <laughs> so we spent the winter months coming into 2006. Uh, we'll, we'll get the whole, the whole three uh, items restored. The only one hose reel with the big wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, the wheels had all rotted off, all the ones with the tin rim on the, on the, on the, the, on the housing. You know, all the, all the wood spokes were all rotted off. So Benny and I went driving around, looking at antique shops, see if we could get a pair of uh, old farm wheels, you know, to try to match up similar with the wooden spokes. And uh, so we took the, the hub off, off the, the remaining, uh, off of one of the remaining uh, rotted wheels to try to match up. Uh, so traveling around, we went down, Found the big antique shop down in uh, uh, Smithfield, just down the road from the Primrose Fire Department. It was a four-way intersection. They had, a, they had farm stuff out in, the, out in the front of that shop. I mean, wagons, farm equipment, wheels of all sizes and all kinds. So we took the hub trying to match up. We had this set of wheels, but they wanted figures, but they, they had the wooden spoke, but they had the, not the metal uh, rim. They had the rubber. Oh, I got you. But the, the hub fit perfect to the wheels, the one we took off the old one. So we bought that set to put on the hose wheel that the wheels were riding. So uh, everything worked out, and then then come the 2007 fire. Because I got, I had my, uh, uh, I kept my home base when I was, was on the fire department to begin when I bought a, I go home base at home, and uh, now I got a, I, my nephew bought me a portable that I keep in the kitchen, and my big one's in the living room. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm sound asleep three o'clock, and I'm on, and the tone goes off. Deep Oak Street mill fire. I sat straight up in bed looking at the ceiling. I said, "Oh, don't tell me." I said, "There goes the three pieces we got all restored." <laughs> to get ready to put into the garage. I said, oh, that's that, you know. So the next day, Jack calls up. The fellow did a great start, especially with the, the old wooden section of going back to the old Oxbridge Worcester that still remains there today on Depot Street, the big wooden section of the mill. Yeah. They made a great, I, I would have thought that old wooden structure would have. Like candle wood. Well, that would have yeah. went up. But they made a great yeah, stop. Because a lot of that, that wood yeah. soaked with oil and all the stuff from years, and once it starts going. So they made a great stop at the firewall. 
to that. Awesome. So Jack called me up the next day uh, and said that uh, the equipment's got saved, it's in a boiler room, move it over to the garage. So we wound up like a workshop and mm -hmm. we had benches and, and repairing this and fixing mm -hmm. that. And <laughs> stuff, we were putting stuff up, but working in there, we had everything everywhere in our way, you know, trying to do things. Yeah. It was a long process, but... You know, well, me and Gina uh, went through it too because you gave us that, um, the reel that goes on the back of the fire truck with the hose. Well, me and her, we reeled it up, and because that hose was so stiff, she was getting beat up in the in the museum. It's twirling around, and so that's the thing is we're experiencing some of the same things you were in the beginning, and it is very cool that we're saving the history of the fire service. You know, every little piece we save is one piece someone else will learn later. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. <coughs> so anyway, uh, because of that story. Uh, that I did. I, when I saw that uh, uh, posted, uh, oh, somebody mentioned it to me, but I think it was a poster on the bullet, bullet and board in the, in the, when he went into the town hall, mm -hmm. right in the, the main uh, entrance oh, yeah. way yeah. on the board, uh, posted that he was going to demolish it. So I got, when I got home, I sat at the kitchen table and wrote the story. A copy went to the Tribune, the Oxbridge Times. That's my copy there. So you for surely made a change. So um, everything took off from that that, that story. Uh, well, thank you for sharing that, and thank you for putting that story out because look what it's done. It, it's changed you. The same thing with my YouTube. I started doing these videos on YouTube about just sharing the history, but then it's become so important they're using them in training now, they're using them in award ceremonies, and so that's it's so huge to me that we can share yeah. what we've learned and been through with others, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sounds like the call's going out. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. I said it sounds like the call's going out. Oh, we got a, we got a name. Man based down there, and we got a portable up here. He's five for almost three or four years using that oh, wow. 45 foot forest. So that was that, could, that was there for that a could, Yeah, that could go anywhere. Are you? Hey, Roy, I'll be back. Okay. Oh, for breakfast, place must open. <laughs>